Hello, my name is Jim Hill. I'm with UFC Inc. Today we're going to do a demo of Abbey Flexi Capture. This is version 10. We're going to show the difference between ICR on constrained fields versus ICR on unconstrained fields. And this is for a fixed form. This is not for the flexi layout form like what we would use for an invoice. Okay, the purposes of our talk today are to show you the ICR performance of FlexiCapture 10 and compare the output on constrained versus unconstrained forms. And I'll explain what that means here in a second. There's some assumptions here of our talk. The forms are completed in block letters using all capitals. Yes, exclamation point is necessary here. That's a pretty big assumption on forms. We can put instructions on forms for people that use all capitals and write within the constrained areas on the form. They don't always do that. So that's the thing when recognizing handwriting on a form versus machine printed text. That's really one of the shortcomings of ICR or intelligent character recognition. So that's a big assumption here. But with that, what I've done is create samples that use hand printed all block letter text just to do some comparisons here. When we see text that violates from that, we are not going to get as good of OCR performance. We get better, or ICR performance, we get better ICR performance on numbers first and then on letters and then alphanumeric would be the worst. Okay, we're assuming that we're scanning all the images at 300 dpi or higher. Whenever possible, rules are applied to the data to improve the output. We did basically tell Abby FlexiCapture what type of data we're expecting, if it's a phone number, a date. And we can do things like regular expressions to improve the ICR performance even more. Even though we're not showing it on this demo, it's a pretty standard feature would be to have a database lookup of values. So if an employee fills out their social security number, we could then look up the social security number and then populate the rest of the values on the form. So that would make the ICR performance much less critical. Assuming that we had that information already, if we don't, we would not be able to do a lookup. Okay, here is a form. This is one of Abby's sample projects. It's included in FlexiCapture 10, so this may be familiar to you if you're already using FlexiCapture. You see this form, you see the constrained areas these cells and in the document definition for FlexiCapture you actually list the number of cells available for text to be printed. I'm going to zoom in here on a second show you a little bit. Okay, here I am zoomed in. I've got the area highlighted. These constrained areas are areas of the form that we're going to capture ICR or hand printed text. Notice that um, hopefully people will write within these constraints. And that's the whole idea of constraints. And also, I just want to note that when we print this form out, these constraint areas are very, very light. So we need to be careful that when we print this out and distribute this form, that these constrained boxes do indeed show up in the print. We do want those to be recognized. Now, things like some of the um, document processing softwares out there, like virtual rescan, it will actually take and remove these dots when I scan the form. I consider virtual rescan software pretty standard and basically I would say one of the requirements for high quality scanning. We would assume that the scanner is going to be configured with virtual rescan software and 300 dpi or higher and it will clean up some of these areas. The idea of the constraints is so we know where to look to perform the ICR. That's the key idea we have to keep in mind. Okay, now I've gone into that form and I've changed that form now and I've just created a simple underline. No cells, so we make the broad assumption that capital letters will be used 
And we're just going to then run some samples through with each type of document. So what we want to do now is go ahead and go over to FlexiCapture. Okay, I'm opening Abby FlexiCapture 10. So here's my, this, this is my all-in-one, this is not a distributed install, this is the um, all-in-one installation. This is the non-web-based installation. I'm just going to go ahead here. I'm going to show you a couple of the, um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show you one of the document definitions, see what they look like. Here we have the um, constrained version in here, and I've got that enabled. If I just go in here to this editor and just do edit, I'm just going to go in there and show you that document definition. And you can see these constrained areas here of these fields. I've just drawn these boxes around and grabbing information in here. So if I double click here, you can see over here on the right that that's the first name field. A pretty straightforward layout of these forms, these document definitions. This is not a difficult thing to build. Unlike the Flexi layout product, the fixed form product is very, very straightforward to build. There would be some exceptions in creating regular exceptions and database lookups, and the scripting for the rules would take a little bit more. If we go in here, we can add a rule, and you can add a VB script or other language, other programming language type rule in here, and there's a new rule, so there's my script rule. I could write a rule to say add up the number of checkboxes in an area. I could do math on a form, and that way I would not require the users to properly submit mathematical answers. So if I had two fields that need to be added up, I would just add those up. Database check, again, considered very, very standard. Checksum, also a very standard routine that we would do. So with that, I will close out the document definition editor. You see the title up here at the top. And we'll just go ahead and what we'll do is just run some forms through. So I've got this particular document definition enabled, banking for the constrained form. So I'm just going to go ahead now. I'm just going to load some images. So I, what I, what I want to do is load a constrained sample form. So I'm just going to go load that um, completion. Okay, I'm just going to run, go ahead and let FlexiCapture run through this. Okay, it's done recognizing. So now I'm going to go ahead and run through the verification stage. And this is where we, we tell the system whether or not the OCR, ICR, OMR process was correct or not. So we can see that these checkboxes have all been properly identified. We'll just confirm. These have been identified as unchecked. It's quite obvious that there weren't any checked ones here. We will confirm that. Here we recognize a character as a zero. Obviously that's correct. We see in the image down here. Go ahead and confirm. This is a true. We can clearly confirm that. You see that down in the lower right as I move through these fields. 94633. It looks like a B, but it recognizes it as a 6. Why? Because we had a rule in place telling that this was only a number. So even though it looks like a B, it changed it to a 6. Properly recognize that. So we're at 100% right now on ICR, this hand-printed text. This is 95040. Correct. Correct. Again. Also correct, recognized the dash correctly. Laurel Wood recognized the city correctly. 4000 Buzz Circle recognized correctly again. Okay, so as we see, we, as you could see through the verification phase, we received 100% accuracy in the data verify process. So had this gone through with no user intervention, it would have been 100% complete. And as it was, 
we didn't have to change a single character. So we can call that a 100% result. So that's not bad. Now that's, again, based upon some assumptions that we are using hand-printed all block letters and that we're staying within the boxes. We're printing somewhat clearly. I'm just going to go ahead and hit export and then it's going to go ahead and export off to a folder that we've designated here. So with that, I'll bring this into view. There's the data that it found. So we can show you the data. Um, we can just open it up in Excel, and there's the data that it found. Again, that was what we said was 100% accurate. So there's the data that it extracted off the forum. If you want to see the stamps that it got, you know, there's some of the signature stamps that we received in previous batches and then the images themselves of the actual documents can be captured. So in this, place, in this case, there's the image that we actually captured. And we can program that to be a searchable PDF image. So we can put that text that we recognize in there. We can go ahead and have that text lay underneath of the image. And that's a nice, slick way of keeping the um, metadata tied to the image itself. We still have a legally acceptable format. We just have some metadata hidden behind the, each of the fields. With that, what we're going to do now, we're going to go ahead and delete this batch. And now you can probably expect what we're going to do. We're going to go document definitions. We're going to unable, disable the unconstrained one. We're going to go ahead and switch to a unconstrained. Form. Now what I've done is I've gone in here and I've copied this form. I've told it all we're looking for now is some simple underlying fields. And in reality, the difference between these two, the performance by Abby between these two forms is almost negligible. So we could find it's not necessary to go in and recreate this form for this test. But I did it in order to improve the OCR, ICR results as much as I could. So, and I'll just show you quickly what I did. I went in here to this particular field and I just changed the properties on that such that it said it is now underlined. You can see it's an underlined field versus a shadow box type field here we had before. You see this here, this partition frame with a certain number of cells, which we had before. So I just changed it to an underlined type field and just select what it looks like in the picture right there. That's all I did. I went in and changed all those. Now I'm going to enable this. Like I said again, it doesn't really make much difference in performance, but I wanted to maximize the, the ICR performance for the purposes of this demo. So now I've got this document definition running. I'm just going to go back and load the images the same way I did. This time I'm going to load and a completed unconstrained form. I'm going to load a TIFF image here. I have a TIFF and PDF. I can load either one. Go ahead and do that. So it says processing. I'll hit update here. And as it finishes up, um, it'll go ahead and automatically recognize it did. It said it experienced a confidence level of 83%. The ICR was 83% confident, it said. At this point, I'm just going to go ahead and verify. Now we're, we're going to expect to see some differences. Last time we had 100% performance, and this time we expect less than that. So let's look and see what we get here. Go ahead and verify. Now we didn't change anything with checkboxes, so checkboxes should be and are exactly the same. They were completely recognized 100%. Okay, now we're getting into the comparison here. So we have a zero, correctly recognized as a zero. We can confirm that. You see the underline field now. The underline is showing up in here as we would expect because it was a very solid dark underline. We can confirm that. Again, we're looking at this character one, correctly recognized. We know that we're looking for a phone number in that field. So let's look for a certain format in the phone number. It recognized the six correctly. We can confirm the eight. Confirm. So right now we're still at 100%. The 94633, it recognized as, a, or the four character, it recognized incorrectly. So what we can do here is we can say 
um, this is a 4. This, we're going to just go ahead and say that's a 5. And we'll go ahead and confirm that. So that, you see two characters were in error now. So we're not at 100% anymore, which we would expect. So here we have ABC, Enter Tech Company, E-N-T-E-R. Okay, it mistook, mistook the E here. So I have to correct that. I took the Q for an R, or actually the R for a Q, so I have to correct that, enter tech. So this isn't bad, but again, we're not at 100%. This is correct. It did correctly here. Jennifer, it did correctly on the E. Okay, it mistook the P for an F. I'm going to hit backspace now and um, actually just put all capitals in here. So let me just undo that. Just hit the capital P here. There's a little bit of a learning curve with using the system. Once, once you walk through a few forms, though, it becomes second nature. One of the things is if you need to insert an additional character in here, you have to hit the insert button to add a character. Otherwise, it just overwrites by default. So Pitt has now been corrected. California, we can see that's kind of messed up. What may happen, it actually may just be faster for us to just type the whole field in rather than correct individual characters. So that's what we did right there. Confirm. Confirm. Laurel Wood, it didn't do 100% like we did last time. Again, I just over overwrote the characters. So now we're complete. We could indeed export the data now. We're not going to do that. We already know what happens when we do that. It's just going to export that data, which was corrected and is now 100% complete. So with that, we will go ahead and finish up our discussion here. I just want to summarize what we did. We showed the difference between a constrained field and an unconstrained field. We made a, a minor change to the document definition, but what we said was that really that change wasn't terribly necessary. I have run forms through the existing document definition that relied on the comb characters and received just about the same results. But we could also say that we were not at 100% anymore. We were probably at maybe 80%. So here is my contact information if anybody would like to talk more about this, Jim at ufcinc.com. Our homepage is ufcinc.com and all of these videos are on the Using Abbey website, usingabbey.com. So I want to thank you for watching this today and please feel free to reach out to me with any questions that you may have. And I'd be glad to do this demo with you one-on-one -on -one if you would desire. Thank you very much.